This is George Demery, and how are you? And thank you for joining us for another episode of Your Money Matters. I have a very special guest today, and, and she has a marvelous story that I, that I think would be great for her to share with our group. Her name is Nina Carter. She is a member of Stephen Baptist Church happens to be a loan officer for West Beco Bank. She's been doing this for a number of years now, and she, again, has a marvelous story on how she to be where she is today. That I have discovered over time mm -hmm. that, that veterans don't take advantage of. One of those is their ability to get mortgages at, at very attractive rates, many times with little and sometimes no down payment. No down payment. So, wow, that, now that's incredible. Now, I also believe that they deserve it. Yes, absolutely. It's an earned benefit. Yes, I mean, it's not something that they're giving to them. No. If you are willing to serve your country and to fight for your country, and in, and in my heart, I believe country owes as much as we possibly can to help you succeed when you decide that you don't, wear, don't want to wear that uniform anymore, mm -hmm. you know? So, Nina, kind of tell me a little bit about your background. Tell me, you know, what you did prior and uh, a, a little bit of, of those steps that you took to get to where you are now. First of all, George, I just want to say thank you very much for the invitation to come here and share my testimony, because it really is a testimony. Um, you said that I had been in the mortgage business for several years. Actually, I'm just recently returning to the mortgage business. I was in the mortgage business 20 years ago. And um, when I was in the mortgage business before, I learned the importance of credit. Part of the reason why I knew the importance of credit is that five years prior to that, I had been diagnosed with breast cancer. And a lot of people know that I'm a breast cancer survivor, but what they don't know is that when I was first diagnosed, I did not have health insurance. That was way before Obamacare. So with no health insurance, I had over $100,000 worth of medical debt. And um, I was disabled, unable to work for a while. But then I made a decision to return to work. I returned to work, but I had bad credit. Wow. I had uh, bankruptcy on my credit. And then, of course, I had a lot of debt, just not being able to pay my bills. And so... It was really a blessing that I was able to get into the mortgage business because a lot of times if you don't have excellent credit, they don't give you those kind of opportunities. They don't trust you. You know, <laughs> they want you to make sure those who are handling their money, you know, are, are able to um, be financially and credit worthy is the is a term that I've heard you say before. So after I got back into the mortgage business, I got re-diagnosed with, with breast cancer. Wow. And so I also was diagnosed with some other health issues, and so I became disabled. Not only was I disabled, um, I also was able to get my rating with the VA of being disabled. So I, I spent years just volunteering and not working full time and kind of floating around, you know. Um, several years ago, I did decide that it was time to get back in the job market. And so I started working with JCPS, mm -hmm. and it was so rewarding. You know, I love inspiring kids because that's really, I feel like a gift that God has given me that I care and want to help people. Good. Well, after COVID, I'm like, I've had cancer twice. I've gone through chemo. Maybe I don't need to go back into the classroom. 
So a friend of mine, in fact, a member of the church, Curtis Owens, he's like, I bet you'll be better. You would be really good to get back in the mortgage business. And he connected me with the vice president of West Banco out of Lexington, who interviewed me. I had three different interviews and um, they hired me and I thought it was just a blessing. Now, they hired a different person than when was the first person that went into the mortgage business. This time they hired someone who was a homeowner who had good credit, you know, and who had worked to build my way up from what I would say is the bottom. So, so let me let me ask this. <clears throat> there are a lot of things that we've done with Money Matters over mm -hmm. the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and remember, one of the things is just basic financial literacy. Yes. How do you handle your money? You know, two is uh, uh, employment and education opportunities. Three is that we talked about this in, in our staff meeting just this week, the importance of thinking critically. We've talked about this a number of times in, in, at Money Matters because it is so important. We talked about credit worthiness and being worthy of someone looking at you and say, yeah, I'm going to lend you money because I know you're going to pay me back according to the terms that you agreed to. Mm -hmm. And finally, procedures and steps on getting out of debt. Last week, we talked about reasons why people got caught up. And they're, and they're, and they're really, it's easy to get caught up. When you have a credit card in your hand and you see something that you like, you cannot purchase, or be, you can't use a credit card on likes. When you use them, it's got to be needs. So kind of share with us, share with the group, how did you go from a person who had $1,000 worth of debt, who was not a homeowner, to the, to the person who now they hired this different person who is the, the, the Nina Carter today? It's really an amazing story. That's why I can share it, you know, with uh, a sense of hope and with the scripture, okay? Because one of my favorite scriptures when I was going through that dark period was Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I held on to that scripture through a lot of issues, health issues, divorce. And what I had was a sense of faith in that God has told me that he has a plan for me. And guess what? It's to prosper, a plan for a hope and a future. So when I know that, and I know that maybe I don't know what the things to do, maybe I'm not really sure. And being in the mortgage business helped. It connected me with people, professionals who could give me a pathway so what I think is most important is that once you've kind of stumbled and you've had some credit issues, it's like, what does it say? We fall down, but we all get up. So once you have that issue, you have to have a strategy to get out of the ditch. And for me, it was connecting with professionals who could teach me just as like what you're doing. That's why I'm here, because I believe in what you're doing. You have to tell people the important things is self-discipline. You know, yes, I like to have everything beautiful, but no, that's not gonna give you, that you might be the best dressed person in the room, but do you have any money in the bank? Are you say, you know what I'm saying? So it's really, really important to have the self-discipline and to have the strategy, but someone can have a strategy, George, but here's the thing, are you gonna work the strategy? So you have to have a determination. And for me, I got denied when I first applied for a VA loan. But guess what? My strategy for success is like, what is it that I need? Teach me. And the same way that I had lenders teach me what I needed, that's my calling now, is to teach other people what they need to do. Making sure that you have all of your documents in order, making sure that you're consistent in your banking. You can't be uh, going um, overdraft on your bank account <laughs> every month and thinking you're going to go out and qualify for a loan. I don't care how much money you have, you know. So the principles that I've learned that to me now is my call to share with other people. So when I think about it, like I said, everybody can have some bad credit and then you have a strategy to get out of that, you know. 
And then once you have the strategy, I think you do what you're doing and what I'm trying to do is pay it forward. I think the blessing of God is when you share the blessings that God has given you with other people. It's, it's, you, you said a few things. The first of all, you talked about faith. And many times, how many times has Pastor Cosby said in so many different ways that faith and fear cannot exist in the same room? Yeah. You know, just because you're in one situation today does not mean that's the situation or position can be, you need to be in a month from now two months from now or two years from now. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you said that I, I just wanted to take note of is you talked about discipline. And uh, I've shared this with our group many times and I love this quote from Nick Saban. And um, he said, either suffer the pain of discipline or you will suffer the pain of disappointment. I love that. I just, and and I just when he said it, he was talking to his football team about what they had to do to be champions. And either you work real hard now, but, here, but, here's, but here's the, the deal. You're going to suffer the pain. Oh, yes. Either on the front end or the back end. No pain, so, no gain. So you suffer it now and, and you get there. And, and, and finally, one of the things that you said that I just needed to take, to take note of. You talked about strategy. Yeah. And how you developed a strategy. With help. And how someone helped you, like you said, to develop, correct? Yes. I've had a number of people, Nina, over the last two years come to me for help. Either seeing the program, hearing that I do have some, some information that they can use to help. But this is what I tell every one of them. Don't come to me if you're not going to do it. Because they would be wasting your time. <laughs> Don't waste my time. Yeah, I get it. If you're not going to do what it requires in order for you to put yourself in a position to be financially secure, you won't do it. If you're not going to develop a budget, don't ask. If you're not going to try your best to create an emergency fund, you got to have it because there will be an emergency life. Don't ask. If you're not willing to not buy on emotion, don't ask. If you're going to let social media and the people around you dictate what you do with your money, don't ask. So, Again, I what's think I'm back strategy? in boot camp. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? it's very stringent. Uh, here's here's the thing. I think you have to have different approaches because some women and men too, I know from personal experience, they are uh, purchasing out of some emotional need. It's the same way about eating. And so you have to first address what, what is causing and what is driving. For some people, it is keeping up with the Joneses. But some people actually have some mental health issues and causes their overspending. And so they may need counseling to look at that. I know for sure that whenever I felt depressed or had a breakup, you know mm. what I had to do is go out and spend a lot of money. <laughs> okay, I had to shop. I mean, that was my way to soothe myself. Then, um, because in Atlanta, when I was living down there, it was all about trying to keep up with people. It was all about trying to have a certain look. And so um, I changed my way of thinking because I understood that it was important to me. And I have to say this from a personal experience. When I, when I got married years ago and I had already filed bankruptcy, I had thousands of dollars that come through me through disability, you know, and... That's something to talk to people about, George. People that have health issues that are delayed and they're getting the Social Security, they may get thirty dollars or $40,000. Wow. Okay, so when you get that money, what do you do with it? You should invest it in real estate and property. I should have put it in maybe some IRA or some kind of savings or something like that. But what happened was I had this idea that I was going to help my husband rebuild his credit 
He had some tax IRS, uh, IRS debt, helped him. I positioned him and helped him because we were husband, we're, I mean, husband and wife. And it ended up, we got the house. We lived in the house. We were there for nine years. When it was time for uh, us to um, go our separate ways, guess what? I could not afford to buy him out. I could not afford or did I qualify in order to purchase that house. And so all those thousands of dollars that I had invested, I had to walk away from that. Now, it was able to negotiate a small settlement, but nothing like it should have been. And that was a hard lesson. And you talk about pain. Some of the greatest lessons in life comes from the most painful experiences that we have. I, I agree. <laughs> so it taught me, make sure that you don't invest in something that you're not able to purchase outright yourself. Why would you do that? You're setting yourself up for failure. So now, guess what? My house, guess whose name is on the deed? So that's not going to be an issue anymore. But those things, I'm sorry. Um, that's good. That's good stuff. You know, because that's I want to make sure that people know it's all about different life experiences. One of my friends, her, her husband passed away, you know, so that completely changed her income, her household income. So you never know what life event that you might go through, whether it be illness, whether it be a job loss, whether it be a divorce. I like the strategy that you speak of because you're telling people prepare for that because it's life. Things are going to happen. But what happens when you don't have the money? My, my point is, for me, you can rebuild. So just because something bad happens, as Rev says, don't park there. Abso absolutely. No, no matter what, as I said earlier, just because you happen to be in this position today does not dictate what that position looks like tomorrow. I would, frankly, I was talking to my son about it today about another issue. And that's that what you do, and it's really this way from a, from a sales perspective. You know, I was, I was a salesperson for many years. Right, right. The work you put in today will dictate what that commission check looks like three months, four months, five months down the road. If you didn't make it today, it's because of what you didn't do yesterday. Right. And, and it, it, it just is. It's about reaping what you sow. You said, you said a few things. You said you change your thinking. You change your thinking. That's key. A guy by the name of Earl Nightingale says that you become what you think about. Never consider yourself a failure. Because if you think you are, you will be. Consider yourself, remember, and Rev said this many times too, a setback is a setup for, for a comeback. I believe it. And I've lived and, it. And you had a setback, and now, you, because of what you were and what happened to you, now you can share this story with many other people who may have had, maybe not similar Right. Or the same hurdles, but yet whatever there, whatever your hurdle is, <clears throat> trust me, you can get over it. And and I've I've shared with I've shared this with people many times. God puts a series of hurdles in front of you, I believe, and I believe that every time you get over a hurdle, it gives you more strength to get over the next hurdle. I just do. I know it. It it builds. You mentioned something to me early today. I think we want to get, talk about before we get out of here. And that's that you were bankrupt. Tell them what happens when you file for bankruptcy. At the time I filed Chapter 7, I really debated, you know, the debt reorganization, talked to an attorney. Um, not only did I have over $100,000 worth of medical bills, I had other bills too. So when you go and make a decision about bankruptcy, bankruptcy, that's a major decision because it's going to be on your credit report for 10 years. Is okay. it 10? I thought it was 7. Um, it's actually 10 years. Wow. Okay. It's actually 10. I know that people say 7, but it follows you for 10 years. Wow. Because they will ask you, maybe it's on the credit report for, I, I have to go back and check, but I know from what I've been told right. that it is, it will follow you for 10 years. Mm -hmm. It followed me for 10 years because I was still <laughs> inquiring about it. 
Um, so when you go to the lawyer and you make the decision to file, the, uh, file bankruptcy, they will wipe out your debt. But basically, you're starting over. So the way in which I started over was by getting a secure card, which min many uh, strategists will tell you that. Yes. And that was one of the things that I did. But guess what? I got the secure card and I maxed it out. You can't do that. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So you have to make sure you keep your balances low. And the other thing that I did was I purchased a car. Now, I, I paid a ridiculous interest rate, <laughs> but I knew that I needed to get a line of credit going. And so I paid that high interest rate and I paid it off. And then I also went to Aaron's Rental. A lot of people don't know when you go to Aaron's Rental and you pay it off, they will report to the credit bureau that you, you paid it off. Now, why did I do that? I'm trying to build a credit file that shows credit worthiness. You already see here that I wasn't credit worthy before, but the future is looking brighter. And it did work. I, I just diligently continued to do that. Now, when I purchased the car the next time, I didn't have to pay that ridiculous interest rate. Why? Because I paid the other car on time and I had proven myself credit worthy. It, it is. So, so audience, do you hear? Just because you were in one position last year does not mean you need to be in that position this year. <clears throat> the key is for credit worthiness is being credit worthy. Pay your bills on time. We've talked to people about it. A 10% a interest rate on a car, I don't have that number in front of me, but I, I almost have it memorized. If, if, if you borrow $20,000 at 10% over 60 months, as, as opposed to, to $20,000 for 60 months at 3%, at 3%, you're paying about $2,000 in credit. That's mm -hmm. how much that money's costing mm -hmm. you. At 10%, it could cost you as much as six or seven in credit. So when you when, remember, when you buy something on credit, the first thing that you buy is the money. The same way with the house, now that I'm working, you know, uh, as a lender, you're looking at that, okay? So if you have a $100,000 house and you're looking at you're going to have a 3% interest rate, what, that's $3,000 on the annual, okay? But if you're having to pay a 4 or 5%, okay, so you're looking at 5000 So if you have a good credit score and you can come down to 2 and a half, that's 2500 that's looking at just the interest rate. Of course, you have to have your principal, and then you're looking at the um, taxes and insurance on top of that, you know. But right, your, your credit score affects everything. You know that. Yeah, it does. Your, your, your car insurance, <laughs> you know, your homeowner's insurance, everything that they look at is going to be adjusted by your credit rate rating. If... Um one other observation that, that you talked about, and, and Ward Beatty talks about this, and he talked about certain things that has to be there in order for you to be successful. And one of the things he said that if you get into any kind of relationship, right, that to make sure that you and your spouse or your significant other are always on the same page. If you are not on the same page, especially financially, you will not make it long term and you will not be in a position to build wealth long term. All right. Now, share before we get out of here today, share with me anything else that, that, that you would love to share with, 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 with our audience that, that you would think would be worthy information that they could take with them when, when, when they watch our show? One of the things, because I am a veteran and a passion of mine, is that I really want to help veterans to become homeowners. And I appreciate when, what you said about them um, earning that benefit. Because I think I hear some say, you know, sellers or whatever, maybe they don't want to deal with a, a VA loan because it might be a little more complicated you know, the inspections that are required. You have to understand that veterans who have served, they have earned that right. And so if you want to support veterans, we just had Veterans Day. One of the ways in which you can do that 
is by will be willing to accept the VA loan. That's one thing. The other thing that I want to uh, I want to share is that years ago, and this is the reason why I'm in the mortgage business mm -hmm. again. Years ago, I have a cousin who's a veteran. He and his wife. This is a true story. They had ten children. Wow. And they were living in a two-bedroom apartment. You're kidding me. And I was working for Wells Fargo, and we were trying to get this loan approved. And it was looking a little shaky. And I was, I was in choir rehearsal downstairs, <laughs> tabernacle choir rehearsal, and I saw that I had this call coming in from this underwriting. And I came outside, and I was praying, and I was talking to this woman. And I said, my cousin has 10 children, and he's living in this two-bedroom apartment. What can we do? And so I, I think we provided some additional information. Bottom line is that loan was approved, and I was talking to his wife yesterday. 18 years later, they're getting ready to buy a bigger house, and so they want me to do their loan. I get choked up when I think about that. Part of the service industry is serving others. That's right. It's not so much about the money. And I believe if I keep paying it forward, I believe that's the reason why God has allowed me to have a turnaround, because he knows my heart. He knows that I believe in serving people. And I know that you believe in serving people. So I thank God for you and your ministry, because this is a ministry. And I hope that something that I've said today to inspire people, I don't care what it looks like now. I don't care how dark it is. God is giving you a hope and a future. It's time for the turnaround. I thank you very much for those kind words. I also believe in the importance of service. We, uh, in our staff meetings over the last number of weeks, uh, we, we've been talking about leadership because I don't, I think in order to be successful, any organization needs to have great leaders. And one of the characteristics of, of leadership is influence. And sometimes influence can be positive or negative. But the other thing that I believe is very important is be willing to serve. That all great leaders are, need and, and I hope are willing to serve. And, and today being, this is, this is our, our last show for this season, you know, and, and I want to I want to conclude our show by, by these P words that I've used over the years. This is just during my, my during the sales process and when I'm talking, when I was talking to customers. And the first one is perspective. They have a, a perspective to live from, which from my opinion means how do you view a problem? Mm -hmm. Do you view a problem as a problem or do you view a problem as an opportunity? Every problem is an opportunity. Number two, have a priority to live by. Stay away from the haters. Stay away from people who tell you you can't do it. Think of about the folks that told you you couldn't do it. You need to stay, keep them at, at, I was about to say arm's length, you need to keep them at double arm's length. Mm -hmm. And don't listen to that. Number three, power. Have a power to live on. I know what my power is that I live on. You know what your power is to live on. And I'm not trying not to throw my power on other people, but the power that we live on is a great power. Amen. It's a great power. And when things don't look like you can make it, we talked about it. You have faith and you ask. And there is power in prayer. And finally, purpose. Have a purpose to live for. Why are you here? And you developed a purpose. That's why I thought I'd brought the, I, would, I would bring those P words up. A purpose. With that being said, God bless you too, Nina. God bless you. Thank you. For, thank you. We're not shaking hands too much during yeah. COVID, but I have to shake your hand and say thank you. Because this is a blessing for me as a reminder that the struggle was real, but God blessed me in the midst of it. And, and he, because he is a very blessing God. Amen. If you just give him a chance, you know what I mean? If you walk with him, you know, I always say faith without work is nothing. If you have faith and you were willing to work at it, you can make it even in this country. 
that seems to not be fair to certain people, and it's not, but we can still overcome. With that being said, I want to say thank you. Thank you for taking, and, and, and Nina, thank you for, for wanting to participate in Your Money Matters today. I've, I've enjoyed what we do. I've enjoyed this season. I look forward to what we're going to do in years to come. At St. Stephen Baptist Church, we want all of our members, and for, we have tons of friends now, because we have thousands of members, but we also have thousands of friends because St. Stephen is more of a global church now because of streaming. Some of the positives that we've gotten because of this pandemic, and we've reached people that we never dreamed that we were reached before. So thank you again. And as always, at St. Stephen Baptist Church, God loves you, and so do we.